Hey guys, welcome back to Prep Talk on Prepping in Progress. It's Prep Talk, it's Jeep Talk, it's, yeah, um, your Wednesday dose of weirdness. I have a blessing to share before we get into the regular video. This was not planned, so, intro, uh, stop. Stay with me. Yeah, you know, welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you guys are here. I need to word what I say very, very carefully. Um, The work environment has been a little rough recently. A lot of people are discouraged. A lot of people sometimes don't know what is going on from day to day. Um, policies seem to change or emergency actions be put into place for various reasons. And you don't always know what you're doing or what's coming down the pike, or what you're allowed to do. Um, for the last month, we have not been allowed to put in for PTO, and paid time off. Um, or I should say, we're allowed to put in for it. Uh, our supervisors are not allowed to approve it. And with that as a backdrop, today an email went out stating that Saturday was mandatory, eight hours. You, if you've been with the channel for any length of time, you know my religious beliefs. Um, Friday sundown through Saturday sundown is Sabbath or Shabbat, depending on how you word it. And I can't do that. And I really didn't know what to do. And supervisors were scrambling to find out what exactly was going on, what the policies were, what was going on. And I called HR. And thank the father. One of the ladies in HR came in with the new administration and the other lady, I am so grateful, was part of my interviewing team. And then she quit. And then she was rehired. And I called her extension and I said, to the effect, I'm not going to probably get it perfectly right, but I said, hi, this is Stephen. And... As per my interview, I religiously cannot work Friday sundown through Saturday sundown. Um, do I need to call in Friday and state that for religious reasons I cannot come to work on Saturday? What do I need to do? And rather quickly, uh, 30, 45 minutes later, I got a call, you know, come up to my office. And I walked in, and guys, I'll be honest, I was expecting to be told, thank you for your service, but we're no longer needing you. And I was expecting to start a new job on Monday or Tuesday. I mean, that's what I was willing to accept happening. Um, and I had a lot of trepidation. I had a lot of angst in my stomach. I walked into her office and she said, you're fine. We got this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she said, Let's go see so-and-so, the head of HR. And I walked in and she had my file open. 
And she said, don't worry. Um, you documented this from the very beginning. It's not a problem. We do need the extra hours of man hours on the floor. We'll figure out a way to work with this. And I said, ma'am, I'll come in at 530. I'll stay late. I'll come in on Sunday. But Shabbat, Sabbath is, I, I won't compromise. I don't think I said I won't compromise, but it was something like that. You know, I, I, I can't do. And she said, not a problem. Not a problem. Let me get with your supervisor. We're going to have a meeting. We're, we'll figure it out. Don't you worry. I said, hey, not a problem. You know, happy to accommodate. And I went back to work. At the end of the day, we had a paper to sign. And I went in. I handed it to her. I said, you know, I'm not going to be here. And I guess she thought that I knew that I needed to come in and sign. And I thought I, 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 I knew I needed to take it to her, but you know, and she wrote exempt religious reasons at the bottom, just sign and date. And I did. Um, it looks like to get the eight hours that they need, I'll be doing a couple of 12 hour days. Um, <laughs> until it's in the books and you know it's going to be tough it's going to be long days um thankfully i think i get an extra break <laughs> i'll probably have to bring an extra meal for lunch or an extra lunch or something to snack on but you know guys the father is great if you follow him and honor him He will reward you. I I almost broke down in tears in the office. Because it's been a stressful couple of months. There's been a lot going on. Um, At one point, we didn't have some things that we needed, and they were furloughing people. And, you know, you you strive for perfection, and when you feel like you're failing at everything, it's rough. But we're going to be okay. You know, it's it's not in our hands, but in someone else's. So... Stick to your beliefs. Stick to your guns. The Father will bless you. And now this has gone a little bit longer than I thought it would. But we're going to give you the regularly planned prepping and encouraging video. But if you're struggling spiritually, guys, hold fast. Hold fast. There are things going on behind the scenes. There are good people out there. Good things come to those who wait. Wait upon the Lord. You will renew your strength. You will mount up on wings as eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. Hold fast. And now your regularly planned video. It's good to see you all again. Um, I've got a little quandary going on. Have any of you used a group called Wallaby? Um, it's a website. I'll leave a link in the show notes. I got an email from them wanting to do a paid I don't know ad uh, me talk about them on the channel and you guys get a code 
to type in whenever you order from them. Now they do oxygen absorbers and a few other prepping things. Um, I can't remember the name of the channel at the moment, but there is another channel that has hooked up with them. Now, prepping in progress was never about making money. However, as the stock market crashes, I find myself worried about my job. So, send us your pennies, your dimes, your nickels. No, seriously. Um, I am considering going with this because right now on Amazon and other websites, it is hard to get your oxygen absorbers, your Mylar bags, your food storage stuff. And it would be a good resource for some of you. So here's the thing. Yeah, I get an 8% uh, kickback if we did the ambassadorship program. But you guys would get a discount if you ordered from them. So, has anyone used Wallaby? Is this something you, our viewers, would consider? And should I investigate further or just let this go? Um, I'm kind of putting it up to the group think tank. So, yeah, there's that. Um, as some of you know, the channel was demonetized a couple of years ago, about a year ago, uh, because I just wasn't putting up content. I keep saying we're going to try to keep content going up and go back to two videos a week. We shall see. I'm going to try, but I work, and I'm building a tiny house, and I haven't let you guys inside to see where we're at very often. Mostly because it's dark, because there's no electricity, and yeah, there are other concerns, like, yeah, secret compartments and all that neat stuff. <sighs> Tell you what, when we're done, I'll give you a tour. We got the wood stove for it. I'll see if I can't put up a couple of pictures of that in the video. So... What else shall we talk about since it's prep talk? Traditionally, prep talk has been where I encourage you. I encourage you to go out and do the things. Well, as you can see, I've got earbuds in. I've got bone inducted induction headphones on. You can't see it, but the ham radio is working. The CB is working. We've got comms. You know, that's my big thing. I love being a ham radio operator. The earbuds, well, I'm gonna call Gerard in a minute and uh, have a nice little chat with him about this and some other things that are going on. But, uh, communications. Whether it is your interpersonal communications with the people you love and care about, or whether it is workers, or whether it is being able to get communications out in an emergency. Communications is a key. You know, we as humans are social creatures. And I've said this before. We exist to commune with others. There's a reason why people tend to go a little round the bend if they are stuck out in the middle of nowhere by themselves. You know, when I first moved to Arkansas, I, uh, that's a long story. We'll get into ex-wife number one and abusive relationships and moving 500 miles away to no longer be hit at another date. Um, what we will discuss is I moved to the mountain and I went back to school and all I had for company was a dog it was a little itty bitty puppy and I started to go a little stir crazy and one day I uh, 
saw this kid at school that had a dragon t-shirt and he just looked like the type and I know some of my Christian friends are going to look down on me but I role play I do Star Trek I do Star Wars um, sat in on a few other games but those were my main and I said hey you know where I can get some RPG books and he kind of arched an eyebrow and said, okay, you're interesting. And we got to talking. Next thing I know, Brandon and I are brothers. And he only lives about 10 minutes down the road from me. About five miles, but 10 minutes down the road. And his family brought me in. Now, up until that point, I was going stir-crazy. I think I mowed the grass three times one week, and I didn't even need it, just to have something to do when I wasn't studying. And the community that they formed, my adopted uncle, Uncle Doug, Aunt Wendy, Brandon, Hope, became my family. They were people I could talk with, people I could communicate with, people I could joke with. And to be honest, they probably not only saved my sanity, but my pocketbook, because I was living on $500 a month for gas and food. And there were months when the jerk neighbor's Great Dane would come over and eat the puppy's food, and the puppy ate that month, and I didn't. But... Wendy and Doug started putting a meal on every evening and making me stay. Because I didn't feel comfortable at first, you know. I mean, these are friends. I feel like I'm taking advantage of people. But when you're down, sometimes God sends angels. And these, those are four people that I absolutely adore to this day. So community and communing, social creatures, you know, even in the Bible, man was not meant to be alone. I, I shall create a help me for man. And God put Adam to sleep, takes a rib, creates Eve. We're not meant to be alone. And if dark times come, the way it's beginning to look, you need to be forming your community. You need to be getting to know your neighbors and knowing which ones you can trust and which ones you might not be able to trust. You need to be able to call them up on the phone lines if the cell phone towers go down. And it can be something as simple as getting one of those FRS, GMRS, Motorola talkabouts and everyone having an agreed channel that they're going to be on. Or it can be as complex as having a ham radio network that operates across the state. Because for a while, the ham radio repeaters should still work. Many ham radio repeaters now have a solar backup. Many ham radio repeaters have a diesel generator backup. And the clubs do their best to make sure that they stay up and running for disasters. And an economic collapse would definitely be a disaster. I highly, 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 highly advise you to get your ham radio license. And not just your technician, even though technician's great, it gives basically super walkie-talkie abilities. Your handheld, or like the one I have with the Jeep, can do 50, 60 miles line of sight, which means you know, mountain top to mountain top, or in a straight line. If it can pick up a repeater system, you've just doubled or tripled your communication ability because the repeater will take your signal and then bounce it out 
as far as its antenna and its power will send it. So I may be running, I think, I don't remember how, how high my high setting is, but let's just say my handheld's high power is 8 watts. If I've got that tied into my Jeep's antenna, suddenly I've got an Uber antenna on an itty bitty 8 watt radio, I think my big radio does about 70, 75 watts. So I've got the antenna kicking it out, picking up a repeater, and then that's kicking it out. I can talk from just outside of Harrison, Arkansas, if you know where that is, to Bentonville, Arkansas, via repeaters. And this is the kind of thing we do. Uh, the other thing I'm going to say is, once again, I've, I've harped on this before, Get your license because we recognize voices and call signs. And to be honest, you can't fake a call sign. Every call sign has certain numbers of letters, certain numbers of numbers, which delineate where your license was originated, what zone you're in then you also have the specialty licenses and let's say I won't use his but I'll, I'll K7TU we'll use that as a mythical license that's not the standard number of characters in a call sign it's actually a easier call sign the, the actual call sign that I'm thinking of was made for Morse code. Uh, the gentleman can do Morse like nobody's business. My point is, we will recognize a fake call sign versus a real call sign. And if we do that and we know you're a fake, we're not going to give you as much information as we would someone who we recognize, or a voice we recognize. Now, in ham radio there is um, a caveat to the rules. In a life or death emergency, you may use any frequency and any power setting that is most likely to bring help with or without a license. So, Anyone could hop on my ham radio and go, you know, use CB talk, you know. We got a 1033 at, you know, such and such an intersection. I'm dying, I need help. You know, and anyone who knows police jargon, the old 10 codes, that's an accident. And then, you know, ham, raiders, ham radio operators will get you help. But we're a community. Ham radio operators are a community. We went to the uh, preparedness fair last week and ran into some great ham radio operators from Bentonville. Bentonville Ham Radio Club is superb. They have some amazing people. I can't say enough good things about the time I spent talking with one gentleman. We were describing antennas, and he's telling me how he put it up the tree and down the tree and across the grass in a huge circle because that's what he had. Um, and he was describing how he made it himself. And he and I exchanged call signs, and I'll keep an ear out for it. And if he we ever get the chance to talk again, it'll be great. So, community. Communication. You know, part of the reason why I asked for your input on the Wallaby thing. You know, we are a community. Whether it's me here in Arkansas and the Japanese listeners, I saw that. 
or the German listeners, I saw that too. It's good to have you guys here. Or whether you're two miles down the road. We're a community. We work together. I try to sell to tell information and get stuff out. You guys throw information into the pot in the comment section. That's how this thing works. So if I can do for you, if the wallaby thing is something you would be interested in, I might take a risk on it. So, anyway, there's your prep talk. Build your community. Build your communications abilities and move forward because I have a feeling times are going to get a lot rougher before they get a lot better. All right, you guys, thanks for watching Prep Talk. It's good to see you. I just ran over a copperhead. Have a great day.